Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the displaced threshold. By the end of the video you will know what a displaced threshold is, why it is so important during the operations and how can you recognize a displaced threshold. First, visually, looking at the runway in real life and then on the chart as well. So it is very important that you stay tuned until the end of the video in order to get a full grasp about this topic. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from pilotclimb.com. I help you to become a better pilot. So if this is what you want to do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the Pilot Climb channel, give it a like to the video. This is extremely important. So let's talk about the displaced threshold. So you have a displaced threshold anytime the actual threshold of your runway begins at a point that is not the same as the starting point of the asphalt of your runway. So you have the asphalt, which is your runway, okay, the, the big strip, but sometimes the threshold of your runway begins at a point that is not the same as the beginning of the asphalt. So when these two, when the, the threshold doesn't begin at the beginning of the asphalt, that is a displaced threshold. Okay, you may be asking, but why we've got this thing? All right, the displaced threshold, it is very important because it's not usable for landing. So that means that you cannot touch, you cannot do the touchdown before the actual threshold. So the, the displaced threshold, the part, the area, the asphalt that is before the actual threshold of the runway is not usable for landing, but is it usable for the takeoff. So you can take off out of there, you can use that part of the runway for the takeoff purposes, but you cannot do, use it for landing. So this is the first the big um, concept that we need to take into consideration. Why you cannot use this for landing is because the pavement of that area, of that asphalt is not strong enough. So when you impact, when you do the impact on the ground, when you're landing, that, that part of the run is not treated enough in order to support the weight of the aircraft, okay, upon landing. But it's okay to use it for takeoff, okay. The difference between takeoff and landing is that on the landing you do the impact and the, on the, and the takeoff you don't, okay. Fantastic. But how can you recognize where is my threshold and where is my displaced threshold? Okay. So when the actual threshold begins with the with the asphalt of the runway, that is not displaced threshold. So you've got the threshold starts really at the beginning of the runway. However, if you move the threshold along the asphalt or along the asphalt strip, you will see that you have got this displaced threshold. And if you can use that part of the asphalt for takeoff, you're gonna have these white arrows. So as you can see from the picture, you will have these white arrows that will point you uh, towards your actual threshold okay so when the, the arrows are white you can use that part of the runway for takeoff but again not for landing okay so the main benefit the main benefit of this is that you can actually have a longer runway for takeoff okay and you may say yeah but why don't we use it for landing apart from the, the problem of the way that we just said on the impact on the landing is because maybe there is an airport let's say that has some obstacle along on final on the short final so the the lowest parts and the landing that you can achieve is your actual touchdown zone so you cannot go below that path because otherwise you won't keep the terrain clearance for example okay but since for takeoff you don't need a, a terrain clearance because you're already on the ground, okay, you can actually uh, make the runway longer for takeoff because you can actually use the part of the of the final approach that you cannot go below, otherwise you won't have the runway, the terrain clearance for takeoff. Okay, so you can line up in that part and then take off. Fantastic. Another indication that you might find before your actual threshold are the uh, yellow chevron marks. Okay, you see these big, uh, they are like a big uh, uh, arrowheads, yellows. Okay, Th when you see those ones, that means that you cannot use that part of the runway for takeoff. Okay, so the threshold won't be in the same position as the beginning of the runway, but because it's gonna be displaced. However, if you've got uh, this uh, yellow chevron marks, that means that that part is not usable for takeoff. So you cannot line up in that part at takeoff. However, that part can be used, for example, for as a stopway. So if you take off from the opposite side of the runway, then you do the rejet takeoff, and then you stop within that part of the runway where you've got these yellow chevron uh, marks, that's totally fine, okay? And if you want to know more about rejet takeoff, takeoff distance available, takeoff take distance required, I've made a lot of videos, so check in the channel the videos, and I'll link some of them in the description below, all right? So now, again, 
yellow yellow chevron yellow chevron marks not usable for takeoff but it's usable as a stopway for example okay then the white arrows that is usable for takeoff okay so we know already a big dis dis distinctions in here okay another airport markings that you can find before your actual threshold are the yellow arrow heads so if you find these yellow arrow heads before your threshold that means that a part of the runway that looks like the actual runway for takeoff is not a runway for takeoff is a taxiway so what you have to do you cannot line up before your threshold in that case but you have to taxi all the way down to get into the, the threshold and from there you can start the takeoff okay so what does it mean is that if you take off before the threshold in that part of the runway you're actually taking off out of a, a taxiway or if you're landing in that part even though it looks like the runway you actually uh, taking off uh, you're actually landing in a taxiway Okay, so now guys that we know what a display threshold is and we know how to recognize the various the different airport markings that actually indicates if you can use the display threshold for takeoff or not, let's jump into our Jeps and chart and try to figure it out how can we actually uh, spot the display threshold from the chart. Alright guys, so if you look at the charts in here, okay, this is a Madrid airport, okay, so what you can see in here is that the, we've got four runways, okay, so one, two, three, and four, okay, and as you can see in here, we've got one eight left, one eight right, three to right, and three to left, okay, so the black strip is actually the runway, and if you look at this uh, uh, small white uh, indication in there, that actually indicates if you have a displaced threshold and where your actual threshold is, so all this part of the run is actually a display threshold that is usable for takeoff, but is not usable for landing. Okay, so when you come in the approach, you have to land after the threshold. The same applies to this part in here, this part in there, and this part in there. So as you can see, in this airport in Madrid, you've got the four runways, and each runway has got only one part of the runway, only one side of the runways that are actually display threshold. So usable for takeoff, but not for landing. All right. Okay guys, I hope you liked the video and you actually enjoyed this display threshold content and it's now is a little bit more clear how to operate out of a display threshold airport and what you should do if you face this display threshold. If you enjoyed the video guys, it's very important, give it a like. If you have any question, leave a comment below and I will help you out. Go to powerclimb.com where you can subscribe for free power training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one.